Look at that snow. What's up, YouTube? So, first snowy vlog. Nice. Today, well, you guys already know the title of the video, but uh, I'm gonna be making something special. We're finally gonna be mounting the engine in the Porsche. And here we are. We're gonna have to make some space. This will run soon. Don't worry, guys. We'll run soon. Today, we're gonna be working on this. So, to make this bell housing adapter, adapter plate, however you wanna, however you would like to call it, we're going to, I guess, install the new plates. I guess these are like transmission face plate gaskets or whatever. So we bought two new of these because these got mangled while taking off the automatic transmission. So I'm gonna put these on and mark them up. So that's exactly the way I can take them off and put them on a flat 316 piece of steel. Why 316? Well, in NHRA, that's like one of the highest quality standards of steel to use for like bell housing and whatnot. So I just picked the thickest one because I don't know how fast this Porsche would ever go. So I just picked the, th the thickest one. But uh, that was back when I was gonna make a full bell housing. This is just an adapter plate. So that's why we're just gonna, still gonna use this because we already bought it. So it's one thing. Uh, yeah, so after we do that, we make our marks. Then we're gonna have to install our Twindis Tilton clutch. And that's how we're gonna get the inside diameter of it. But you guys will see as we go on in the video. But yeah, this is how she sits right now. And let's get her out, start to work on her. feels super small with this huge go-kart in here but we finally got it on the stand so now change the plate and uh, introduce a new clutch All right, I've got the fresh plates on there. I'm gonna get my marker and start marking up where all the lines meet up so we can accurately get the bolt holes. That's like the cheater method. If this, you know, because this engine has this plate, I can easily take off this plate, know where all the bolt holes are. Just gotta make sure I know where these line up properly, you know, so. That's half thinking away. Now we're going to move on to our Tilton twin disc clutch. Now this is a this is a custom made twin disc clutch by Tilton. You see it come with a ARP. It doesn't come with that. I put that in the box. But this is just a flywheel for right now. I got the rest of the stuff in the house. You'll see that later on when we have to put everything together. But the widest part is the flywheel. That's what we're focused on. So when you make an adapter plate, obviously the adapter plate is going to be like right up on the uh, 
teeth at a flywheel. So we need to know the circumference of this and where is it placed on the engine. So I'm gonna bust out these flywheel bolts and uh, yeah, put this on. Right, so now that we got our measurements and our marks down, we can go ahead and take this off safely and now we're gonna put it back. All right, got these all nice and marked up. And my little dimensions drawn. Don't worry about that, it's architect handwriting. Go ahead and introduce the second part, that's part B of doing the whole adapter plate. Adapting it to, uh, here it is, to this bell housing this is the original Porsche 944 bell housing off of the engine and yeah it's a perfect candidate because it fits you know perfectly on to the uh, Porsche torque tube and just got to make a plate to adapt it to that so all right let's move on all right guys far forward in time here and we have good news and bad news so, the bad news is we can't make the adapter plate. Shoot, something is noisy. We can't make the adapter plate. Reason being is that the way the torque tube bolts up is like this. This is straight, completely straight. I'll show you out on the car, but it is still snowing. But, yeah. So, if we was to do it like that, that means this bolt hole would have to go to the top of the 4G63, like that. And at that angle, I already put the engine back, but at that angle, it would be basically hitting everything on top of this area, especially this coolant, you know, piping and whatnot. So, Adapter plate is out of the picture. The good news is I get to make more content. So I derived a little plan, a little drawing here. If you would note at the top, just try and like get my mind together on how I'm gonna try and make this entire bell housing. Um sheesh. Well, we got the measurements, how far the flywheel comes out the uh, circumference where it bolts into uh, and where this plate uh, meets up and mounts so the bolt holes we don't have to worry about and the adapter plate I mean the bell housing we have to make a cutout for the starter here and basically just you know mimic this so this plate that I of steel that I cut a long time ago for the uh, 4B11 build or 4B12 build actually it's gonna come in handy because this plate fits nice like everything is just perfect with this so we put this on here you can see everything's perfect the plate's actually bigger than what we need and yeah this is gonna be the start of our bell housing After about, um, I guess about 30 minutes of cutting, grinding, and cutting up with the grinders, is the, the shape that we got, I'm missing this little corner here, but that's not going to kill anything. But, I don't know, yeah, it was a cool effort, and I want to cut out all the holes and make sure that this works. I might have a different method on 
how I might do this. Hmm. Maybe if I can put a little bit of my architecture skills to work here. Well, if I put the bell housing on the floor like this and take a picture like that and take measurements like this, throw it into the software like that, Get the shape by tracing the outline like this. Turn it into something 3D like this. And take it to Raymond's plasma table just like this. Alright guys, this piece came out so well. I actually decided to cut out the engine side of things too. So you can see this is the engine side for the bell housing. This is actually came out really 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 nice you can see that the bolt holes aren't in it but that's only because the plasma table you know isn't you know as accurate for bolt holes it might actually cut out bigger or smaller you know not as accurate so I took my vinyl cutter and i made a little template and as you can see it's now it's no longer a rectangle it's a hex better for like bell housing design you you can like picture it i guess but this is an accurate template of where all the bolt holes should be. So, did that. Went ahead and also made the same thing for the engine side. You see this white piece of paper. See, this is the little guide plate, little, like gasket plate or whatever. And you can see all the bolt holes line up nicely. And, you know, it's like houses. Basically like a really nice template for when it comes time to actually put the holes into the that piece of metal for the engine. But we might end up doing it out of a thicker piece of metal only because when we start welding this thing will warp. Same thing for the torque tube side. There's only 3 sixteenths thick. So Raymond recommended we shall do uh, three eighths and then after it you know it's welded it may deform and warp a little bit and we go ahead and sand it down all right so now we're gonna move on to the next step that is taking measurements of how far the belt of the flywheel come off of the plate right here and we're just gonna be able to just put these on with these nice arp flywheel bolts i don't think we'll be torquing stuff down for right now because we got to get this plate off and you know we'll be taking the flywheel on and off so i'm just going to put these on hand tight just to get our measurements all right we got all the measurements that we could i guess use hopefully this will be the last of the measurements but you know whenever you're fabrication fabricating it's always like measure twice cut once you know so, hopefully this should be it though. So, let's go inside because it's really cold outside. Alright guys, inside, I'm looking at my workstation here. And I finally finished designing the entire bell housing in 3D. So, you know, one of the pros about this, you actually get to see how the pieces and stuff will go together and get all the proper measurements. So, what I basically did was take all the measurements, took measurements of the flywheel, the tilt and clutch over there, distances between the shaft and all that stuff, to come up with this. And, uh, yeah, it's looking pretty cool. So now all of these individual pieces we're going to, uh, cut up and put up on the, uh, plasma cutter table. I'm going to be using, I believe, 316 steel. That's like NHRA standards for, like, custom bell housings and whatnot. So I might as well just, you know, they already did the research. So I might as well just use their, uh, you know, specs. So, uh, yeah. All right, so that's about that. I also wanted to take a look at the uh, YouTube analytics really quickly. But thank you guys for all the support. You know, over the previous year or so, I've gained like 300 subscribers. So that's actually pretty cool. Channel's going pretty fast. Thanks to you guys' support. I guess I'm... Um, Doing something that you guys like to see. So I'll try and keep putting out great content for you guys. So 
Let's go over to uh, Raymond at Mariah Welding Metal and uh, let's make this bell housing. Ugh. All right, made it back to Mariah Welding. You ready, Mike? Yeah, man. All right, let's get this bell housing finished. Yeah, if you looked at the camera, you're fine. You're looking pretty good. Pretty good. All right, guys. After several weeks of planning, designing, and a little bit of building, we finally, finally got the bell housing made. Now it's not finished yet. You see, we're still missing the bolt holes and whatnot. So we're gonna go back and um, you know put those in, make sure everything's right. But we brought it home just to see if it lines up on the motor properly. So you'll see that in the next video uh, about, you know, part two of this whole thing. Because this is like going to become a really long video. So might as well end it while I'm on a good note. Look at this. Look at this. The fitment of the flywheel in between. You know. So we're going to size this up. Make sure all the bolt holes, you know, line up properly. And yeah, make sure it you know runs. It's it's gonna be really cool. I can I'm speechless. Like this thing's amazing. Like look at look at it. Something that we designed on the computer came out. And it's, it's just like one whole piece. This guy's amazing with his welds. Sheesh. What do you think of it, Mike? You would think it was just one piece to begin with. You would think it was made <laughs> right? for our application. Son, this is right. just it's just amazing. Just amazing. Man. I still have one hand here, so you can see how many pieces it was actually constructed out of. And then uh, we have this little two inch bent hole so we can run the lines through. And it's facing right here. We're gonna close this up eventually uh, to see like how far the starter actually, you know, comes down. So we'll worry about that later. But look at all this, look at all this guys. This is amazing. It's just amazing. So we get to hand over to unsystematic.co get all your systematic needs situated and uh yeah shout out to charles i don't want to say your last name i'll put you on blast in this video but he was the first ever person to ever buy a sticker on my website ever ever so shout out to you and uh if anybody else buys anything i will also shout out your name on this so uh yeah, don't forget to comment, rate, send, subscribe. Don't forget. Never stop modifying. Alright, never stop modifying.